Hey bookworms, welcome back to my channel and to another retro review where I review classic novels. Now when it comes to classics, I think many people think automatically about England and I certainly made more videos about the UK in this series. However, today we'll jump across the pond to one of the US classics, which is The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck, a novel that I was supposed to have read in university for English Lit, but didn't because I have lots and lots of stuff to read, but here I am about a decade later filling in the blanks. The Grapes of Wrath takes place in the 1930s during what was called the Dust Bowl. This was a time of severe dust storms around certain prairies in the US in states such as Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, etc. And this caused really heavy droughts in those areas, where people were reliant of crops in order to survive, to make a living, to feed themselves and their families. And as you can imagine, droughts and dust storms equals no crops. So many people decided to pack up and leave, searching for their fortune somewhere else. And I understand that California was a very popular destination. However, if you know your history, you'll know that this was also the time of the Great Depression. So the situation in other states wasn't much better. And the great wave of these migrants caused a lot of resentment among the locals because they were coming to try and get jobs that those locals were fighting over. And therefore they weren't really welcome with open arms. It was a tough time. And when you think about the fact that it was right before uh, World War II, wow, let's not get into there. So in The Grapes of Wrath, we follow the Jode family. Ma, Pa, Tom, Noah, Elle, Uncle John, Rosa Sharon, Winfield, Ruthie, Grandma, and Grandpa. Adding two more human friends and a couple of chickens and dogs, the Joes from Oklahoma realize that if they stay put, they will starve to death. So they pack up and leave for California, where they hear there are jobs and they can get a house and have an electric iron and eat meat every week. And this is a story of their journey, their trials and tribulation, meeting both good people on the way and some really bad apples and trying to survive and stick together and rely on their family bond to keep their heads up and look forward for tomorrow, even when the situation is very rough. That was quite the intro, so I'll try to make the overall review short. Very short, actually, because I realize I can describe my reaction to this novel in one word. And this word is... Wow. Just wow. Look, I know this is a classic, okay? And there is a reason why it's so famous and reading material in universities and such, but I did not expect it to be that good. Boy, what an experience. You will see this book next January on my list of favorites. It was fascinating, page-turning, thought-provoking, heartwarming, heartbreaking, funny. This book is long, but it's worth every single page. And now I will try to explain why. First off, the story is really interesting. It's a trial and tribulation of a family. It's historical fiction. It's a road trip. It's a little bit of an odyssey because they go from place to place and meet different people in each stop and have their own little mini arcs. It's also a little like one of those fables, kind of reminds me of the ugly duckling where he goes from one place to another and then in each he meets a different uh, moral of the story, you know, how different people will react to a duckling like him. And the Jodes also encounter different situation and learn different things about the status of their country and their fellow countrymen as they travel. And when I say the book is interesting, I don't mean just the story itself. The storytelling and the narrative were fantastic. There are lots of description in this novel and it was fascinating. Seriously, I never thought I would enjoy so much reading about dust and corn or how people's eyebrows and cheekbones look. Entire paragraphs and I swallowed every word. In addition, I also want to say that I understand that this novel is intimidating. It is very long. It's considered one of those heavy classic. And I certainly was uncertain prior to reading it, but I was surprised at the humor this book possesses, albeit it's mostly at the beginning before the situation become really dire. There are some wonderful reminiscing and storytelling from characters, and I love those moments. I could listen to these people forever. But let's move on before I gush even further. My favorite part in the book were the characters. They were so 
lovely, mostly. And I simply fell in love with the Jodes. The whole time period when I read this book, I kept thinking about the characters and imagining having them around for dinner, chatting with them. Ma Jode was my favorite. I'm retroactively adding her to my list of strong female characters in books. In addition, there's also a fantastic character called Jim Casey who joins the group and he's a really interesting character and also one of my favorites. He used to be a preacher, but he lost his faith and pretty much questions everything from what is good and bad, power of prayer and divine intervention. Which leads me to a very interesting theme in this book, which is the disillusion with higher power and the idea that someone will save you. And I'm not just talking about God, but also disillusion with uh, the government as a protective force. Our protagonists slowly learn that no one else will come to their aid. If they want something done, they need to do it themselves. And I don't want to go too much into details because first one can analyze these themes with enough material for a three hour video. But also, I will leave it to you to reach your own conclusion about the book. Just make sure to tell me what you think in the comment section. But this actually leads to maybe my one complaint about this book. You see, there is a strong message here that money and power corrupt, which is totally legitimate. However, as the book progresses, we get more and more of a very clear divide. Poor people are good-hearted, while the rest, like the government and police and the business owners, are bad. And as much as I understand the whole power corrupt theme, it was a little too simplistic in my opinion. I really loved some of the kinder characters that Jodes meet throughout the novel and how easily they open their hearts to them. But it comes at the expense of some depth in the other characters. So to conclude, because otherwise I'll be here forever, this book was so good, you guys. I absolutely loved it and will definitely read more John Steinbeck. I was so immersed in the world of the story and honestly felt like I was taking part in the journey to find a better life. This novel is a gripping story that looks intimidating, but I urge you to still give it a chance. It's not all loss and misery. And there's also so much more to say about this book, about its historical significance, themes of government that abandon its people, about how we assume things about others too quickly, about leaders, religion, corruption, feminism, Dickensian good-heartedness, and much much more. But I am finished with my English Lit degree, so I'll just stick to reviewing this book, not writing essays about it. For God's sakes, I have a day job. I barely have time to read books. Anyway, guys, that was my review on The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Thank you very much for watching this video. And if you liked it, please don't forget to like it, share it and subscribe to my channel. And if you're interested in classics and which ones are beginners safe and which ones are just pretentious, I have an entire playlist of classic novels I reviewed. So go check it out. Again, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye bye.